I was born four years after the end of the First World War. And my father was in the army. He must have joined underage because work was impossible to get at the time. And that's where he met my mother at Woolwich. She was 18 when he met her. When I was 16, I remember the war starting and I thought, well, it'll all be over before I go in, but it wasn't. When I was 18, I got a letter to say that I had to go for a medical for the army. I got the medical through, I was past A1, physically fit. I, I was in the army, so you're now in Britain's secret army. Our cap badge looked like a Christmas tree. It had an arrow pointing in the middle that represented the spearhead of the attack and the lightning side of each part of it was speed we worked at. And it had reconnaissance corps written at the bottom and we didn't realise how kind of work we were doing. It meant we were in front of everybody. You know, we were forsaking the enemy, like a kind of spying. I was a driver mechanic. I was a brand gun carrier driver, that was my job. I had a crew of four, and they didn't call us private, we were troopers. And we worked in squadrons, the company was split into sections. Anyway, all of a sudden, we had to move down south, and we didn't drive down, loaded all our vehicles, put all our loaders onto trucks, onto the railway, they took us right down to London. I was issued with a brand new brand gun carrier. We moved down to the Thames Estuary. We waited a few weeks but everything was so hushed up we didn't know what was happening we we had to move on to these lcts landing craft tank and the invasion actually started then because we we couldn't operate until they got a foothold onto the beaches and landed on sword beach i drove the brand gun cage out and all the others did the same spread out a bit and it was all, all it seemed all peace and quiet because Germans were still in charge of Khan. First day we was on, we had Sergeant Brown was killed, he died. He got his old dug out, his trench dug out, his slit trench. He failed to get in quick enough. I was in my brain gun carrier and I jumped out of it straight like into the bottom of an edge and laid flat. And then there was another lad killed, hit him in the back. There was a few casualties and our officer said, well, it says, you're going now where you dig or die. And he was right, because we just got on. Can we talk about when you were in Holland now, Sid? You'd gone through, you'd gone through France, Belgium, yeah. you were into Holland. We were going then, into Holland. And then it was October 1944, and yeah. you were going on a recce up to find a bridge over the River Mass. Our officer said, said uh, he sent us on this mission, call it a mission, four of us. We had to go and look at a bridge that was blown, a railway bridge, and it crossed the river Merce, the river Merce, and the Germans had cut it in the middle with explosives. And we went to see if it was possible for engineers to be able to uh, make something to get over it, which, you know, they were very good as engineers, and that was a, uh, their job. And uh, on the way back, uh, we got the ambushed that spotted us. And, and the fired, uh, fired machine gun through this edge, off, like an off on edge thing. You know, same edge to what they have in Britain. And, and, um, and the travers that way and missed me and killed George. It, it was only uh, the only side of me. It could have been me, and uh, of course I hit the deck straight down, and we threw in, and we put a pill of a fight. You threw in Mills bombers over, and th th they were throwing their tatey mashers at us. But, but, but little Tommy, he escaped. How he got away, I don't know, unless he was hiding somewhere. But he got the information back, which was vital. And, uh, and, and the German said to us, how many of you are, uh, 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 how many of you? I said, only three of us. There were, fact, there were four of us. We, we, we didn't tell him that Tommy had gone. And, uh, and then they uh, took us over the river in a boat. They took it to a, a Dutch house. 
and the Germans had occupied a room there for an office against the Dutch, you know, they, you know, they had no option to allow to have it. Ernie and me had to face a wall in the courtyard. He said, right. He said, um, he shouted so we German, which I didn't understand. You know, and I didn't know what he was shouting. And, and, and then he said in, he spoke English, and he was a perfect English, he could speak perfect English. He said, do you know what I've told my two guards? He said, I've told them to shoot you instantly. Well, our legs just went to jelly. We, we thought that was it, because we couldn't run. We couldn't do anything. 